In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a deformed object that has varying sizes of holes. Um, so let's start by making a box. Go to your create panel and select box under standard primitives. Uh, make this anywhere in your window. Uh, make the box a little taller than it is wide um, so it creates this tower effect. Um, you can change those values right here in the parameter list. Also make sure it has three by three by three segments. Um, you can change these values but just for the sake of simplicity I'm going to keep them pretty low. Also make sure your edged faces are turned on. So to do so right click in the upper left hand corner where it says perspective and turn on your edged faces. This will allow you to see the different subdivisions of that surface that you're working with. So once you're happy with the form of your box select the uh, modify tab which is next to the create tab and from the modifier list drop down select the edit poly modifier. This is going to allow you to adjust the sub object level of this of this object so um, if you expand the sub object list you can uh, select on any of these uh, we will select vertex and you can then start manipulating by either moving rotating or scaling uh, the regions of the vertices that you have selected. Um, you can also use the soft selection tool. So you can see that if I select a vertice, it selects them individually. But if I have the soft selection turned on, it's going to select that vertex that I select, but also the vertices within a certain range uh, based on this graph. So you can toggle up and down on this fall off parameter and uh, affect a, a, a varying uh, region of the vertices. So go ahead and um, adjust that value and start manipulating your object. Also, you might want to select ignore back facing. This will make sure that you don't select vertices that are behind um, the vertices that you want to select. So if I want to select just these vertices and move just these vertices, um, it won't be selecting these vertices and in, uh, in, that are on the back face. So go ahead and uh, deform this object. Use the different uh, tools, so not only the move but the rotate. You want to make sure that none of your vertices are overlapping or intersecting because that will cause problems later on when you add the uh, mesh smooth and, the, uh, and when we deform the individual polygons later on. So go ahead and scale. Okay. So once you're happy with your object, um, select the, the edge sub-object level of that edit poly and turn off your ignore back facing. So deselect that. This way you, uh, you can select all of the edges when you select over this entire object. And once you have the edges selected, um, go down your list until you find the edit edges submenu and select the create shape. Select the box next to the create shape to open up the options of that tool. Um, you can see there's two different shape types, the smooth and the linear. Um, you can use both, but for this tutorial I'll use smooth. You can also rename your shape here. Okay, and you can see uh, that it creates these smooth edges, these smooth splines where there were once uh, uh, linear edges. So select your edit poly and then you can go ahead and either hide that or delete it and you'll be left with this network of splines that define uh, the general shape that you had ext extracted them from. Um, you can also resurface this edit spline by selecting from the modifier list surface and this will uh, redefine that general geometry that you started with um, using a slightly different tessellation. Okay. So now that we have the surface back, we'll want to add another edit poly modifier on top of that surface. And this will allow us to then uh, begin to extrude and bevel these polygons. Um, you can see that if you select the surface in the stack and uh, toggle up and down on the step parameter of this patch topology, it's going to increase or decrease the density of that tessellation. Uh, I'll just stick for this example with step 5, which is the default value. Um, and for the sake of this tutorial, we also want to create varying sized holes. So right now the tessellation is pretty uniform. So in order to start to get more variation on that tessellation, I'm going to add a optimize modifier onto the stack. 
you can see immediately that the tessellation begins to vary pretty dramatically even between quads and triangulations. Um, if you change this face threshold value under optimize in the parameter um, list you can then increase or decrease the number of polygons in that tessellation. So I'm going to I'm going to decrease the number so I'm left with fewer polygons for this example. Okay, so once you're happy with the tessellation, you can add another edit poly modifier on top of the stack and select the polygon sub-object level. Um, again, make sure your ignore back facing is turned off here. Go ahead and select all of the polygons and go to your edit polygon menu here and uh, you can use any of these different edit, edit polygon tools. For this tutorial I'll use bevel but I recommend trying all of them. Uh, select the box next to bevel and that'll open up the dialog. Uh, in the dialog you have three different bevel types, the group, the normal, or the polygon. Uh, if you want to affect each polygon individually you have to make sure it's selected by polygon. Um, you can then change the height values or the and the outline values. Um, if you go in the positive direction of the outline, you're going to get these overlapping faces, so make sure you're outlining on the inside. And then select OK. And then go ahead and delete those selected faces. So you're left with this sort of uh, lattice or cage of, of um, for an object. After you've deleted those faces, you can add a mesh smooth modifier onto the stack and you'll start to see that uh, you are defining these sort of circular apertures in the object. If you increase the iterations you can then get a very smooth very smooth tessellation. I'll turn off my edge faces and you can turn off your grid to see the object better.